They claim the soul Bible has outlived its day. That there are some changes that need to be made. Let no man deceive. Take your Bibles or turn with me to Matthew 24. Truth is determined by the test of time. Trust the old Bible with its these and that. Never mind those people who won't throw it out. Churches are drifting and falling away. We need the soul book more than ever today. Tampered with the Bible and written it anew. Nothing is sacred. Welcome to Empty Cross Ministries Daily Devotional Time. I am Brother David. The name of the program is King James Version Exposed. Because we use the King James Version, we look at the verses, bring them to life, and expose the meaning. Today we're going to be looking at Acts chapter 16, and I've entitled today's episode, could it be a counterfeit? Before we get to that, I would encourage you to follow along with our uh, daily Bible reading plan that can be found on my own personal Facebook page, Empty Cross Ministries Facebook page, and Empty Cross Ministries Group Facebook page. I would also encourage you to listen to our Wednesday Bible study that we uh broadcast yesterday evening. Go look that up here on uh, the archives here, and you will be blessed. As I said, we're going to be looking at Acts chapter 16 today. Could it be a counterfeit? Paul and Silas encountered a woman possessed with the spirit of divination. We see that Acts chapter 16 Verse 16, after being grieved by what the evil spirit was doing in her life and how it affected theirs, they cast out the spirit. We see that Acts chapter 16, verse 18. 
the woman could no longer foretell future events. Before the entire Bible was given to us, there was a need to hear from God through prophets. God did speak to prophets at that time. Now we have all the future God wants us to know within the pages of the preserved Word of God. That would be the King James Version for English-speaking people. However, Satan often has a counterfeit. Fortune tellers are sometimes the imitation Satan uses to give another future than what God wants us to hear. The possessed woman was not of God. The Bible explains what God thinks about soothsaying, divination, talking with familiar spirits, observing the times, enchantment, and other supernatural practices that God prohibits. Here is some of what the scriptures say about foretelling the future. If it does not line up with the Bible, it is not of God. In Acts, excuse me, in Acts chapter 16, verse 16, the spirit was cast out of a person. If it were of God, it would have been desired by God's people, not thrown away. Look at Acts chapter 16, verse 18. Fortune telling is not a good gift, as many would like us to believe today. It is wickedness controlled by evil spirits. When the devils are cast away, the person no longer can know the future or does not have the ability to perform what appeared to be of God. It was forbidden for God's people. Look at Leviticus chapter 19, verse 26. Ye shall not eat anything with the blood, neither shall ye use enchantment nor observe times. That's Leviticus chapter 19, verse 26. Some of the false prophets were foretelling or divining lies. Look at Ezekiel chapter 13, verse 9, Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 29, and Micah chapter 3, verse 6. Some said, The Lord saith, when he had not spoken such a thing. When they came into the promised land, God's people, that is Israel, were told that they should not partake of the same abominations as the heathen. Divination was included in the list of heathen acts. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 9 through 12. Today, today, the wickedness of divination still abounds. Unfortunately, even Christians have been involved with it. Television programs concentrate on it and try to give the occult practice some credibility. The future God wants you to know about is foretold in the Word of God. Read your Bible today, not what the unsaved think the future holds. Let me say that again. Read your Bible today. Read your Bible today. As I said before, I would encourage you to follow along with Empty Cross Ministries daily Bible reading plan that is will give you a scripture from the Old Testament and from the New Testament each day. Depending on how fast you read, it take maybe 10-15 minutes to read all of it. I would encourage you to do that. That can be found on Empty Cross Ministries Facebook page, my own personal Facebook page, and Empty Cross Ministries group Facebook page. Our thought for today is this. Don't worry about the future. God is already there. Before we get to our scripture, there's a few words we need to understand exactly what they mean. That word constrained means held back from doing a task or deed. Divination is foretelling future events or discovering things secret or obscure by the aid of superior, of superior beings or by other than human means. That's from the Noah Webster's Dictionary of 1828. Gains, that word gains means profit. The word magistrates means a person put in charge of upholding laws. And that brings us up to our scripture for today, which is Acts chapter 16 
And after I get a drink here, I'm going to read the entire chapter. Excuse me. <clears throat> Acts chapter 16, beginning of verse 1. Once again, I am reading from the King James Version. Then came he to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Tim Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess and believed, but his father was a Greek, which was well reported of by the brethren that were of Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him, and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew all that for they knew all that his father was a Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. And so were the churches established in the faith, and increased in number daily. Now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, and were forbidden by the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. After they were come to Mysia, they, they essayed to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered them not. And they, passing by Mysia, came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia, and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately... We endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Therefore, losing from Troas, we came with a straight course to Samothracia, and the next day to Neopolis, and from thence to Philippi, which is the chief city of that part of Macedonia, and a colony. And we were in that city abiding certain days. And on the Sabbath, we went out of the city by a riverside, where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the woman, which resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord had opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized and her household, she beat up, besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel, possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrate, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city, and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes, and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in stocks. And at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword, and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, 
Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, and sprang in, and came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out, and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. And they spoke unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his, straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he sat meat before them, and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. And when it was day, the magistrate sent the sergeants, saying, Let those men go. And the keeper of the prison told the saying to Paul, The magistrates have sent to let you go. Now therefore, depart and go in peace. But Paul said unto them, They have beaten us openly uncondemned, being Romans, and have cast us into prison. And now do they thrust us out privily? Nay, verily. But let them come themselves and fetch us out. And the sergeants told these words unto the magistrates, and they feared, when they heard that they were Romans. And they came and besought them, and brought them out, and desired them to depart out of the city. And when they went out of the prison, and entered into the house of Lydia, and when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them, and departed. This has been Empty Cross Ministries Daily Devotional Time. I'm Brother David. The name of the program is King James Version Exposed. We're going to close out here with a prayer and a song. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your preserved word, which teaches us your ways and your commands. And we can see into your mind, just a glimpse into the into your mind, Lord. Father, give us the inclination and the desire to read your word and understand it each and every day. We thank you for technology that we have today that makes ministries like this one possible. As we uh, spread out through the internet airwaves, your word. Father, we thank you for all that you do and provide. We thank you for the beauty of your creation. We thank you for your strength, your comfort, your guidance, and your counsel. Father, be with those who are facing illnesses of any kind, whether they be physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual. Just put your healing touch upon them. Be with those who are facing the loss of loved one, of a loved one. Make your presence known to them in ways that only you can do in ways that they can see, hear, feel, and understand, Lord. For, Lord, for those who are facing financial issues, just put your touch upon their finances. Lord, for those who are facing marital problems, heal their marriages, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, stay safe. Be blessed. Stay in the Word and write the Word upon your heart. That'll leave us all kind of hanging out. Hey, go to, go to page 329, 329, Standing on the Promises of God. And we'll do this one at a little bit, yeah, a good clip like that. Standing on the Promises. that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail by the living word of God I shall prevail standing on the promises of God
Standing on the promises I cannot fall Listening every moment to the Spirit's call Resting in my Savior as my all in all Standing on the promises of God Second. Stand Yes, sir.